Today is uh, Sunday, the 13th day of uh, July 2014. My name is Derek. Welcome to today's silver chart analysis and uh, multiple time frames or three different ones. Very long term, but we can see on the screen going back 50 years to 1963. 128 day chart, but that's about a half year chart. Each one of these uh, red and green candles represents that many days, with the exception of the current one. It's completed 126 days, which means that its period will end on Tuesday. What can we see within these charts? There's a lot of different things. Notice I have the last 93 volatility average because there really wasn't much in the first seven. Although, what would be cool with the charting software, which this really isn't, but if I had a software like this, I would probably want to highlight this and say, you know what, zoom in on this. I want to see what occurred here. What happened? Well, there's about a thousand days in this uh, period, and that's what it looks like. A low of 128 and a high of 131 and three quarters, a difference of almost four cents. Yeah. Yeah, that's like hardly like what, 3%? Not much at all. So the low is 128, back in the early 1960s, and the price today is about 21 and a half. Okay, let's do some simple math divided by current price by 1960s low. It gives us 16 and four fifths. Now the Dow Jones Industrials low in the early 1960s was so about 550. If we take the same difference, could you imagine how beautiful the world would be if the Dow got up close to 10,000 at 92.38? Wow, yippee ki -yay, wouldn't that be so beautiful? But also, in 1932 or 33, when this, everything hit their bottom and the deflationary period came to an end, silver was a quarter, Dow Jones was 42 and a half quarter for the silver market. So we'll take the current price of 21 and a half divided by that quarter, which gives us 86. And if the Dow went up 86 and a half times from its lowest points, it would be all the way up close to 4,000. Would that be just so amazing if the Dow got, even got close to that level? Okay. Therefore, you can say all you want about the manipulation that took place within the Hunt brothers. But personally, I believe the Hunt brothers story about as much as that official 911 story. And I'll just leave it at that for now. Some key things about market analysis. Now, I don't have MACD on here, and there's a big buzz going on right now that the convergence is set for prices to shoot up really high. And that's just what the data and analysis and algorithms tell us. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. And oftentimes when you have these uh, types of indicators that everybody sees, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. We'll see how that plays out. I use Fibonacci retracement, which, oh, geez, no, people don't use that. For, it is calculated as in high divided by low. So in this case, it would be 5036 divided by 128 to the power of the Fibonacci percentage you intend to use, multiply the low. So therefore, 50, 36 divided by 128 to the power of 0.382 multiply 128 will come to 521. My computer calculates that automatically for me. And uh, pretty much every single software that I've seen does not calculate it correctly. But all I'm saying is that the indicators I use are really not used by the people. I use an 18 average, but how many people actually use the high and the low? And maybe there's some of you, because I show this all the time, that you've incorporated it, which would be pretty cool if you did, but not many. And how many people use a front-weighted moving average? Most people use a simple or an EMA. I use the front weight average. I do everything a lot differently, but my bias, of course, is the same, seeing things to be going a lot higher. Some key different things. When the 18 average band gets this fat, we'll call it, that means that volatility is at a skyrocketing huge point, so thus occurring at a bubble or a major top is not a surprise. When it gets really tight, like it does in here, volatility is extremely thin. The current volatility lately has been low, 19%. 
with the average of everything since here being placed in at 43%. Call before the storm. Well, we'll see how that plays out. For the move from point A to point B to be a failure, it needs to hold and stay below this level for quite a significant period of time, which it did, but it didn't break down below the key support level. Thus, the first thing is this rally has not failed, and because the move higher, it's still in process of playing out. Two, when you have a situation where you had this support that was so amazingly placed, have a significant break below it, resist it for quite some time, but are unable to break support. I consider the entire move, this move in here, to be that of a failed breakdown. Oftentimes from a failed move occurs fast moves in the opposite direction. There you have it. That's one of the things. So because it's above this line, that means it's in a bullish level. The 18 average, of course, uprising, but correcting within it. Any move above this band, really breaking above 30, this thing is off to the races. And I'll talk about pattern recognition in just a little bit. But before we do, let's talk a little bit more about Fibonacci analysis. Because if you calculate from this high to this low, you're going to come up with a number around 18. And I think the data site that I used did not get the uh, lows in here pretty accurately because the lows 1822. I'll take a look at those numbers later, but if we take the high of 5036 divided by a low which was I think 345 put it to the power of 61.8% multiply the low again of $3.45 gets us about 1808. Again, last year 1822 was tested and even 1860 was tested a couple other times. So therefore, from a point A to point B, this is a significant Fibonacci, which of course was resisted in here, got above it, and now has supported this area. Holding and staying above this tells me the move from point A to point B is a failed move. Oftentimes, when failed moves can cause fast moves, and so my fast move upside direction would be at least 250 to 300, given the exponential uh, movements that it comes into play. That's my view of it. It's to me a no-brainer as a investment of a lifetime to get into the physical precious metal, which is what I've been doing for several years. Pattern recognition. Let's take a look at some more of this. How about this band? It's been finding support within it twice, but notice that each time that it finds support, it does it at a major high. So this high was supported 2008. And now we have the same thing again. So the pattern tells me that it moves higher and it's going to break this high. Thus, when it crashes again the next time, I would expect 50, which is a current level of resistance, to be that as a level of support. Of course, that could be months. It could be years. I would be extremely surprised if the currency does not collapse by the end of this decade. Let's move on the time frames now. Let's move it on now to the daily chart. And uh, here we have it. This is a high, which means that by the end of next week, it'll be off of the screen. And I'll either manually put the high in of 2218 or just uh, connect it from these lows to these highs. Of course, we're in a situation now where its momentum has a very decent shot of going higher. The volatility on Friday was 0.7%, which is extremely microscopic. I look back to find the last non-holiday with lower volatility than that, and I came up with September 28, 2007, where it was 0.67%. Therefore, almost seven years there hasn't been a day as uneventful as last Friday was. There was um, one in 2003, on October the, or February 28, 2003, there was one. And in 2002, there was 16 of those days with lower volatility, which was the normal back then. With that being said, you had the low volatility phase following a clear breakout of significant resistance 
For this move here to be a failed move, it needs to hold and stay above this line for a significant period of time. It has happened. It has broke resistance. I fully expect the low 22s at least to be tested. And as I've stated, this move in here would either be that of a start of a multi-month bull market or an extremely large failed move. To me, there's no way of telling, but I I bought on this date and I bought on this date in here, the physical silver. And if it goes lower, then you can almost state that I lose because I could have bought cheaper, but either way, to me, it doesn't matter because if you're bottom calling here and you're bottom calling via buying actual silver and a, let's just say hypothetically it goes down to 60 and you can say you're wrong, but if it goes back up again to like 40, 50, well, even though you could have got better, you're not wrong. You would be correct within it. Let's take a look at this now on the weekly term time frame and very simple to now analyze this really. You have this massive down move that uh, broke from a resistance point roughly at around 31, 32 and straight down to 18. Okay, so you go 18, 22 and then you make a lower high, which was pretty much almost a gimme, but what I'd be saying and what I did say, as long as it makes a higher low then you come up to this level, break it out, and you can you got a bullish pattern. Well, you could say this was a lower or higher low and lower high, but instead, I'm just going to consider this a matching low, which was followed by a lower high, followed by another matching low, and as of now, this would be another lower high. So this pattern is always the same. And it's a triangle formation. Let me just draw a line in here. Okay, so you got a line and you got this. So you have a trend line that is broke, but you know what? That means absolutely nothing to me that that particular trend is broke because what's important is getting above three different layers of resistance point one, two, and three. That's important getting above, of course, the significant Fibonacci level. But as I've stated many times with this 18 average, you get above this point, establish resistance. There's four levels of resistance established. Come back to this band or let the band move up through it, correct through time like the daily chart did. Break establish resistance. Boom, shaka, laka. You're pretty much ready to go at that point. So thank you for tuning in to the uh, long version of the silver chart and uh, have yourself a great week. Bye-bye.